Welcome back to YBA's Teen Life TV special. I'm Jessica Green, and I'm here with Daniel Pavlotsky, Marie Schwartz from Teen Life, and now we are joined by Mike Tomasi from the Governor's STEM Advisory Council. Now, uh, Mike, I thought STEM had something to do with health. You're going to tell us a little bit something uh, different meaning. Can you tell us about yes. it? Yes. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And the STEM Advisory Council is charged with bringing awareness to the state as well as workforce development to people and to encourage them to get involved in STEM careers. Wow. So um, I just said wow, and <laughs> I know there's a wow initiative. What, what is this? Well, I'm co-chair of the Public Awareness Subcommittee, which is part of the Governor's STEM Advisory Council. And out of that subcommittee, through a lot of hard work from many people across the state, we developed the WOW campaign. And the WOW campaign was designed to make people aware of the exciting careers that exist in STEM. So we went around the state and solicited input from people in different careers and came up with 15 individuals in many different, uh, in many different realms of STEM, such as video gaming, CSI, um, statisticians. I heard, yeah, there was the Red Sox statistician. Exactly, I exactly. thought that was a very cool one. So when you think of STEM, some people don't realize the, the breadth and depth of careers in that area. So out of, out of those 15 people, we did a, wow vid, a Wowster video, which highlights each individual and what they do. Mm -hmm. And we also put together a nice poster that by uh, the end of this year, we hope that will exist in every single middle school across the state. So how can students get involved in STEM and get and understand how these applied fields can lead to different careers? Well, hopefully the school that they're in has some type of STEM activity or STEM club. Uh, many schools across the states do. Some are starting them. Robotics is a very big area in both grade, middle, and high school where that activity is taking place. Uh, there was a STEM expo hosted in Southeastern Mass in May which had, was oversubscribed by students attending for the day to learn about all the different activities involved with STEM and it was targeted for fifth to eighth grade students. Yeah, I would encourage students though to keep taking science, math, and technology, anything in, that their high school offers yeah. because if they fall behind, it's hard to catch up again. So, you know, tough it out. Mm -hmm. Getting, you know, getting not so good grades is okay because you're still gonna learn a lot. So I see you guys are targeting uh, students specifically, and that's because you want them to join the workforce. Now, where does the U.S. stand in comparison to other countries in STEM workforces or people that have to do with STEM? We, for many, many decades, we were the leaders, but we have started to fall behind. Mm -hmm. uh, other countries are sending their children here to get educated and then going back to their home countries mm -hmm. to take up STEM careers and start STEM companies. I own a manufacturing company. I'm a second-generation business owner, so I employ many people that would come out of STEM education or trade careers into STEM, such as engineers, quality assurance technicians, CNC machinists. So, uh, as Marie said, take these courses, learn, because I can, I can tell you this, if you have any type of engineering or STEM education, you really can apply that to any field that you are to work in, whether it's directly related to STEM or ancillarily related to STEM. So does STEM believe it's important to get minorities involved too, such as girls and people of other races? Absolutely, absolutely. We encourage, we have many females that are on our uh, shop floor that work, as well as the office. So we, we uh, encourage that, it's a great career. There was a program uh, out of Western Mass that targeted uh, some people that were kind of out of work, looking for jobs, not, not necessarily students, so a little bit different than the student life, but. They came up with three different languages, not only English, but they came up with Spanish and Vietnamese mm -hmm. to attract the minorities in the area that were looking for work. And they were able to attract them in and they took uh, a college, Quinn Sigma Community College, uh, a STEM career program that had under 200 entering to over 600 graduating. Wow. So it's really, grow it's really starting to grow. You guys are really trying to pick up the pace and get U.S. back on the top, uh, top <laughs> ranks and everything. Right? Yeah, U.S. and Mass in particular. We are a leader because of the great educational system that we have here. Right. So we're trying to encourage students to, to stay involved and get your education at the middle school and high school level and go on to college and, and bigger and greater things in uh, STEM careers. Yeah, I, I think parents play a huge role in encouraging their kids into particular careers. Um, this is a, the, the future, the most sought after jobs in the next 10 years will all have some science, technology, engineering, or math involved in them. So parents should know that and not, you know, try to steer their kids into areas where they could be successful. Um, but this is where the future is. And if you'd like to learn more about 
STEM. There's actually a great article in Teen Life's magazine that was all about STEM and it highlighted the Wowsters as well. Yep, and so coming up on uh, next on uh, Coming up next on our teen special, uh, we take a time out for technology with our, our very own uh, Lane Sutton. I'm Lane Sutton with Time Out for Tech with your bite of the Apple. Apple recently unveiled the iPhone 5 at their special event in San Francisco. There, Tim Cook, along with other executives, presented the new iPhone, a line of iPods, iOS 6, and the new iTunes. It was said to be the last product Steve Jobs worked with on Apple for his retirement and death. The biggest news is the iPhone 5, sleek as ever. And the most noticeable change is to the body. The new version bumps the screen size up to 4 inches from the previous 3.5 inches. It will only be taller but has the same width and this allows for an extra row of apps. The colors are black and slate and white and silver. It's very sleek with an anodized rim and aluminum back, then glass on the top and bottom to boost cellular connectivity. The phone now features the 4G ultra-fast LTE connectivity on all carriers. Verizon will be the fastest for network speeds. The rear camera is smaller but maintains 8 megapixels and will have better low-light performance. As rumored, the charging connector will be different, now dubbed Lightning for Lightning Fast and it will be 30 pins, much smaller and more durable. The device has an A6 processor, twice as fast, almost as one gigabyte of RAM, better battery life at nine hours and twice the graphics performance. iOS 6.5 is for iPod touches, iPads and iPhones for free, updating Maps, Facebook, FaceTime, Siri, Mail, Safari, Passbook and even photo streams. Maps is the biggest difference, all designed by Apple, dropping Google from integration in Maps. It has turn-by-turn -turn spoken navigation, real-time traffic, and 3D. You can ask Siri for sports, Red Sox games, restaurants, movies, and send tweets or Facebook updates. Just make sure what you say gets it right on Siri. It's also now on iPad. Facebook is integrated system-wide in camera, calendar, Safari, and apps. You can share photos with your streams, and Passbook is your one-stop shop for coupons, movie tickets, boarding passes, and reservations. FaceTime will work over cellular anywhere, and Do Not Disturb is new, hence the name, to leave your phone on but stop all notifications and calls. Camera will take panorama shots, and the iPod Touch and iPhone will include EarPod headphones to fit comfortably in your ear canal with stronger bass and acoustics. The iPod Touch has everything the iPhone does now with a retina display, as well as 4-inch screen, 5 megapixels, and thinner and stylish colors. The iPhone 5 is available September 21st starting at the base price of $199 for 16 gigabytes, and you can bet dollar to dollar I'll have one on launch day. This was Time Out for Tech. I'm Lane Sutton. Now back to YBA. I'm Jessica Green along with Daniel Pavlotsky, Marie Schwartz, and Mike Tomasi. Now we're going to talk about another article from the fall edition of Living with Teens, and it's all about texting and driving. So, texting and driving has been a huge issue lately, and they have passed a new law that now it's, makes it illegal to text and drive. For anyone. Yes. So, why do you believe this is an important issue to have in your magazine? Well, it's probably the number one cause of accidents um, among teens. Teens get in accidents anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think, the, I think I'm I, not the best driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I heard somewhere that half of all teens will have an accident. So anything that takes your eye off the road has to be a problem mm -hmm. um, to a distracted driver. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, I know I read uh, the Center for Disease Control actually said that 58% of high school seniors mm -hmm. actually admitted to texting and emailing while driving. And that's only the ones that admitted to it. There, are, I guarantee you that the statistic is much, much higher and that yeah, it's, I mean, more. I personally don't do it. I don't even feel safe even holding my phone while uh, driving, so. I think the problem is that texting has replaced phone calling people. So whereas before you could put on your headset and talk, even that's bad, but mm -hmm. um, now no one calls each other. So it, it, it's the only way kids are communicating. And I have to 
you know, I'll be very honest, a lot of adults do it too. So yeah. it's a it's a problem that affects everyone. But Especially I think teens, teens in particular. like since they're new drivers, it's yeah. hard enough to pay attention anyway, and then when you have right. that element on top of it. Right, exactly. So now Mike, Mike, how do you feel about this? I know you have two, you told us you have some kids our age. How do you feel about two this? Two in college and one in high school. It's a, it's a major concern, and I think when we grew up, we didn't have that. So we didn't have phones, didn't have that worry. And as a parent, you know, you're extremely worried because the kids, the phone is part of them. It's part of their life. So to make them break away when they drive and concentrate is extremely important. And it's a habit that they have to get away from because, it, it, you know, they are going to get an accident just through the normal learning how to drive. And to have that distraction, it could be very serious. I agree. I mean, there are about 6,000 deaths each year uh, from distracted driving. That's half a million dollars in damages yeah. every single year. And that's, that statistic is only growing because of texting and uh, just overall listening to music, li uh, mm -hmm. listening to the radio even, reaching for something uh, out of reach. Yeah, GPS yeah. systems. I GPS systems. Yeah. 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 There, like, I know in a lot of cars that have GPS systems and now you're not allowed to plug in an address while you're driving because right. it's wow. distracting. I actually think to that point, they're going to design technology that turns off your phone when yeah. you're driving. Because I think if you're in a car and your phone has Bluetooth and you get a call and your car automatically picks it up, I think if you get a text message, your car should pick it up in the same way that it doesn't notify you oh, until interesting. you stop driving. Well, they're, they're working on technology, I believe, for cars that would ultimately do that. Mm -hmm. now. The car may read it to you instead of hearing a voice yeah. over the phone, so I'm not sure if that's the best answer, but it's certainly better than somebody grabbing a handheld device and looking down and looking away from the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's been a lot of psychological studies that if you multitask doing everything, it slows down your reaction time. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're driving a car and it's your reaction time slow down, you look away from the road. No question. Of course, and accident. reaction time is everything in a car and driving in a car because a uh, normal reaction time is something as a um, 0.5 or 0.25 uh, of a second. Yep. And if you're texting, that's taking about five seconds. Now, in the time it takes you to, to read a text in five seconds, you travel about a football length, so uh, football field length. So that's, that's three, 300 feet, 100 yards. That's a giant car pileup, <laughs> essentially. That's a lot of cars. You're going to hit a lot of cars and people in that time. So do you have any suggestions for reducing the temptation? like? Putting the phone in the glove compartment? Yeah, I think like if you have a bag or something in the car, keeping your phone in your bag or keeping it on silent because then yes. you're not tempted to respond if you hear it go off. Right. I completely agree. And even if you have it somewhere where you can see it, I mean, yeah, you just hear it or hear uh, the text coming in. Occasionally when I do it, I know it's my parents, they need to check up on me, I'll pull over to the side of the road, mm -hmm. take maybe even take out the key from the ignition and answer the text or phone call or whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I normally do. I know too, like when I'm driving, my mom, she specifically like makes sure not to text me. Right. So if you're talking to someone and you tell them like, I have to get in the car, I have to drive, then they know not to text you. Oh, that's a good idea. So tell your friends or whatever not to text you all for the next hour. Or so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Teen Life Magazine, where can we get a copy of this? Well, you can sign up online. It's free. You just join as a parent. You can join as a student. You can join as a teacher. And as a, a member of Teen Life, we know how to reach you. And what we'll do is send you a quarterly email for that magazine. It comes out every three months. Each issue will have a different topic. The one in March will be on teens and sports. Um, I know the one in the fall will be on teens and health, I believe. So every issue will have, this one was our, our first issue, um, so we, we're really excited. There's a contest in there this month, which is called Teen Leader. Mm -hmm. We're looking for, to, for people to nominate teens in their communities who are making a positive impact. It doesn't have to be community service, it can be anything. They can be good role models, they can be doing something great, cool, they're super nice to everybody, they don't bully, you know, so anything like that, 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 um, that, that people feel that they want to recognize someone for, they should nominate that person. And we can also get a copy, uh, we can also see the magazine online, is that right? Yes, right. So you can also go to our website and click on it, um, but the best way to get the first issue is to register. That's great. It's yeah. a great source of information for all teens and parents. So for our guests, Teen Life, or Teen Life President, Marie Schwartz, Mike Tomasi from the Governor's Council, Dr. Elizabeth Englander, and my co-host, Daniel Pavlotsky, here at YBA and everyone here at YBA behind the camera and in the control room, thanks for watching and see you next time on Teen Life TV.